In 2003, Tony Ellis, veteran bluegrass musician, received an Ohio Heritage Fellowship Award. Renowned for his banjo playing and songwriting, he has traveled the world as a music ambassador. Some call him a banjo virtuoso. Born in North Carolina, he moved to Tennessee and on to Ohio, and it's here in Ohio where Tony honed his unique style and has taken the banjo to another level. When I lived in Tennessee, I had musicians that I played with that were good friends and, and we played different things. But when I came to Ohio, I had no one to play with. I didn't know any musicians. And so I would sit at the kitchen table with the coffee pot and my banjo, thinking about my buddies back in Tennessee. I missed playing music with them. And also thinking about the years with my grandmother and things that she had taught me. So I was thinking about these old tunings that Granny used on the banjo and I started experimenting and writing new melodies in these old tunings. So I used the old mountain tunings and the modern bluegrass picking style and it opened up a whole new world of opportunity to write new melodies that were quite different in many ways. Uh, instead of everything being fast and furious and exciting, you could write uh, music that was quiet and, and peaceful and, and beautiful and uh, things that uh, like lullabies that you know you just didn't do that on a five string banjo. Moving to Ohio really did open up a whole new world for me and the banjo. Tony Ellis is totally wide open to new implications, to new orchestrations, to new ways to think about music, to to bring n new material into his singing, to perform with other instruments, to perform for new audiences. He, he's drawn to his particular knack, is taking traditional fiddle and banjo music where it's never been before, and bringing new material, both from the world and from his own soul, into those instruments. He breathes new life. Uh, into the tr into the tradition. I've been best described as playing music that's called Americana. It, it represents early elements of the banjo and Appalachian life and musical life in America and uh, goes right up to modern times so that it, it incorporates lots of different elements of American history in terms of the banjo, musical history. Originally self-taught, Tony took banjo lessons and honed his skills, eventually auditioning for the father of bluegrass, Bill Monroe. He later spent two and a half years as part of his legendary Bluegrass Boys. It was a grueling experience in many ways, but an absolutely marvelous experience in many ways. Uh, as an answer to a young fellow's dreams, you know, to get to play with one of the grand masters of bluegrass music and actually the man that was credited with having created bluegrass music. In the country, people either play the banjo or the fiddle. It's very rare to find a musician that can master both. And that's another thing that makes Tony both interesting and useful. The thing about Tony, the way he impressed me and influenced me, was that he plays banjo that's totally different from anything I've ever heard. And it's still really lovely to listen to. Well, 
Playing a banjo has lots of, of elements in it, uh, lots of things that are exciting and wonderful. And I love to play with a good bluegrass band because the, the fire is there, the, the rhythm there, the, the guitar. And you're playing off of other musicians and it all just creates a, an excitement and an electricity and, and a great deal of fun. Tony is an interesting traditional musician in that he is fully rooted in what has come before him, in the way other people have played, in the classical ways of approaching repertoire and, and performance. But what sets Tony apart is his personal interpretation of those skills, of those styles. He's also been an ambassador out since his retirement from his business career, Tony's been called upon to take his music, his banjo, his fiddle, around the United States and around the world. Where does an old time engineer go after he's cooled her down? Bluegrass music in Ohio is uh, very similar to bluegrass music in Tennessee and bluegrass music all over the world. We were in Japan and a Japanese bluegrass band it sounded like Lester Flat Earl Scruggs. It just blew my mind. Wonderful players. And it's like that in Yugoslavia and Germany. Uh, everywhere we travel, we run into musicians that play bluegrass music and, and they do it well. When we play in foreign countries, uh, we, we try to give them a real down-home sampling of Appalachian music from America. Through his performances, Tony reaches a worldwide audience. But he also remembers his roots and how important it is to keep traditional music alive locally with concerts on his farm. We try to uh, encourage the continuation of traditional American music here in Ohio, and in particular using Ohio musicians. And we've had some excellent programs here at the farm. We've had a continuing series of programs. So we'll have three, maybe four concerts a year. We have a pavilion down here and, and we've had some great programs and we really try to keep that alive and well and in the forefront of local entertainment in Pickaway County. To draw the community into traditional music is something we strive to do. Uh, because it represents the roots of people that live here. And many people really do care about their grandparents' music, their parents' music, and even going further back, and historic Ohio music, songs that talk about the history of Ohio or represent the history of Ohio. Like the wise sages from the mountains, you get the sense that Tony's thought a lot before he speaks, and that there's a lot of wisdom in what he says, and that it would be useful to you, it would be valuable to listen when Tony speaks. Now that's true both when he speaks with his voice and when he speaks with his instrument. You don't make any money, it's a labor of love. You hope that you've made a contribution musically that will last. It's something that people like well enough and care enough about that it won't be lost five years from now or 10 years from now, maybe 25, 50 years from now. One of your tunes may still be out there being played by someone and enjoyed by someone. So you hope that you've made a lasting contribution of quality that uh, people will enjoy and appreciate.